this is a narrative that's often presented as the Shia version of the story, the Shia narrative, be that amongst Muslims, be that amongst non-Muslims. And it's actually very frustrating. It's very frustrating to see this perpetuated and repeated and presented in people who consider themselves to be very intellectual and academic. The Shia narrative is not that the leadership of the Muslim community, and in fact, not the Muslim community only. We believe that the leaders Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoints for mankind, they are for everyone. People have a choice whether to follow them or not because Allah has given man free will and wishes man to achieve perfection by means of his own free will, not by means of force. That's a different matter. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoints a guide for mankind, that guide is for everyone, regardless of even their faith. The Shia narrative is not that the leadership of the Muslim community, or the leadership of mankind rather, and the Amr, the command, the matter of Imama, leadership, divinely appointed leadership, has to remain within the household of Ali. That's not the point. Yes, the 11 Imams after Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam are from the lineage of Ali. However, it's not the case that anyone and everyone who is from the lineage of Ali alayhi salam is appointed and entitled to divine leadership. The point that is, for whatever reason, seldom mentioned is, there the, is the main point of the story <laughs> it's not about whose lineage you're from for the Shia it's about who Allah has chosen we believe God appoints that's how it's always been just like Allah is the one who appointed prophets leaders for mankind Allah is also the one who appoints the representatives of prophets those who guard their teachings. It's always been God who chose leadership of mankind that's authorized by Allah, has been chosen by Allah. Allah never asked people's opinions. Would you like this person to be your leader or not? Allah chose and people had the choice to either accept or not accept, to obey or to disobey, right? One of the reasons for this is very obvious, and that is that it's Allah who is the knower of the unseen. You and me may be deceived by a person's outward. A person may seem to be a very good person, a pious person, but you haven't seen them tested with power yet. You haven't seen them tested with wealth yet. These kinds of tests, they don't change people. They just bring out the reality of people that we had not seen, which is often very ugly. So it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows his creation best, and therefore he knows who qualifies to be the leader, to be a leader for others. The sunnah of Allah, the tradition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he's never broken, has been that from day one he appointed and mankind had a choice to either accept or reject that he left to us. The Shia say, why should this change after Prophet Muhammad This tradition continues. Yes, there are no more prophets, correct. But the fact is Allah is the one who's always chosen the guides for mankind. And this continues until the day of judgment. This doesn't change because there are no more prophets any longer. Consider the prophets themselves. Doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Noble Quran that we placed in their lineage, in their progeny, prophethood and the book? In whose progeny and lineage? Nuh and Ibrahim, Noah and Abraham, right? So is this a royal family concept now? No. 
This is Allah's decision. Allah decided to place it in their lineage. And he's just telling us the address. That if you want to find the prophets after, you have to search within this family tree. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided in his infinite knowledge and wisdom. He knew that the best leaders for mankind are going to be from the household of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu The best leaders after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu are going to be from this lineage. He gave us the address. It's Ali ibn Abi Talib, then his son Hassan, then his son Hussein, then one Imam after another from the descendants of Hussein alayhi salam. It's not the case that it's like a royal family, that because this individual is from the line of Ali, the Shia follow him. No, we follow him because we believe Allah has appointed him. Even if he was from the line of someone completely unrelated to Prophet Muhammad we would still be obliged to follow that person and respect them and love them and obey them. The same amount that we obey and love and respect to Ali ibn Abi Talib So the point is, this point which for some reason is always neglected. The point is that the Shia believe that Allah appoints. Even after Prophet Muhammad it's Allah who gets to choose. Allah is one who appoints. Mankind can accept or reject, can obey or disobey, can gain knowledge or be ignorant. That is our decision. But the fact is Allah has appointed, right? Allah appointed these 12 individuals, these 12 Imams as leaders for mankind. They are not prophets, but they are appointed by Allah as leaders for mankind nonetheless. And he's given us the address that these individuals are from the family of Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Not that because they're from the Prophet's family, because they're from the descendants of Ali, they automatically have some status with Allah. We know that the Quran rejects this logic, right? The A'imma themselves, the Imams themselves rejected this logic. That because our forefathers are holy personalities, we are from the descendants of Ali and Fatima and Muhammad wasallam. Therefore, on that basis, we deserve the leadership. Not at all. The A'imma, they had brothers who were just as much related to their forefathers than they were. They had uncles, they had cousins, and some of them were not righteous. The same way that Many of the descendants of Ibrahim السلام, were not righteous. It's not the point isn't that the leadership must remain within the family as if it's a royal family. Not at all. Where do we find the concept of royal family in Islam? Rather, the point is, and the Shia perspective, is that Allah knows his servants better than anyone else. And therefore, he knows best who to appoint for mankind in order to lead mankind towards him, towards their perfection, towards salvation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed done that from the beginning until today, right till the end. He will always do that. He will always appoint a guide for mankind. Furthermore, if Allah is to appoint a guide for mankind, but not tell us who that person is, that is against his wisdom. What's the point of that? That's like me inviting me, sorry, that's like me inviting you to my house in full knowledge that you don't know where I live, but not sending you, sending you an address. What good is that invitation? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far more exalted and elevated than to do something as nonsensical as this. To appoint someone but not tell us. So we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed and he's told us the address. Go to this household these are the individuals you have to follow after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu So to summarize, it's not, the, it's not that because they are from the family of Ali, only they get to be the Imam. No. The point is, it's God who decides, not mankind. It's not a matter of democracy and voting. We don't have the knowledge of the unseen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of the unseen. He knows the outward and inward of his servants. He knows what every single human being would do in any situation that he decides to put him in. And therefore, it is the Lord himself, Lord Almighty, Allah the Exalted, who chooses leaders for mankind. 
and he has done so, and he has appointed them, and he has given us the address that these individuals are from the line of Ali alayhi salam. Not that because they are from the line of Ali, that is the reason. No. The reason is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one who has appointed them. And we as a Shia submit to that. A, a true Shi'i submits to that. That is our perspective. That is our narrative. 